Okay folks, so on this video, all I'm doing is taking you through, this isn't a how-to or anything like that, just me fitting the wheel bearing on the disco. Unfortunately, uh, the other day, the wheel bearing collapsed. Um, as you've seen on the picture, and I was brought back. Well, luckily enough, it was only from round the corner, but uh, it had to be brought back on a recovery truck uh, just before I was off. About to set off to Wales, so thank God there wasn't on the motorway when it happened. But yeah, on this video, you're just going to see me rebuilding it and just can't look at the damage of what's been done and take it from there. Hopefully, there's not too much damage. Um, so let's get cracking and let's get putting it in. Don't forget to subscribe to Panda Outdoors. Do it now. So as you can see, I've just removed that and actually exposed this. The grease looks terrible, like water in it, to be fair. Um, it looks absolutely terrible. And to top it all off, whoever's fitted it hasn't fitted the circle properly because the circle loop is in the cap. What a joke. So, um, as you can see, there's no circle loop on there. Um, it is now stuck inside the cap, where it should be connected just to the drive shaft there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna crack all these nuts. I'll probably just buzz these nuts off with a gun. Um, crack it up, buzz the wheel nuts off, and then I'll buzz the nuts off around the flange. As you can see now, the wheel bearing is well and truly knackered. State of it. As you've just seen, the um, circle was just not even attached completely, which was a joke. But as you can see, that is ridiculous amount of play. So we've got a 17mm socket to get the ones around the heavy duty flange out and then I've just got a 27mm socket to get them off. So I'll bring his back in a second when I'm getting them off. So now the bolts are all out on this. All I'm gonna do now is give it a little tap off with the hammer. And it just comes off like that. As you can see, it's a state in there. Grease is all failed. It looks like it's had water in and it smells disgusting. So we're gonna clean it all out now and get into it. So as you can see now, the caliper's loose. I've just got to take the bolts out. Um, I'll just undo the bolts and take it off. Thanks to Liam, I got some customers in and Liam sorted it for me. So I'll bring his back once the caliper's off and all out the way. So the caliper's off, just leaned it over there out the way. Now I'm just going to tackle this load of shitty grease and get it all off. Uh, and I'll bring you back. I've just got to tap the lock and washer back so we can get at it. So now that washing locker is knocked back. So and we are all off. There's the old locker nut off and I'll just get the washer out now surprise this washer out 
to get at the bearing nut behind it. Okay, so there's the old, there's the lock and washer. That's off. Just gonna put that with the rest of the bits. Now we've just got to get at the bolt that holds the hub on now uh, and tensions the bearing. So again, I'm just gonna whiz it off with the buzz gun. It shouldn't be that tight anyway. But. As I say, you would use a um, ratchet for this, a big ratchet, but while I've got the gun, I might as well use it. And it's just in there. Now, as you can see, all of them are off, and it's exposed the threads. What I'm going to do now is just wiggle this hub off and give it a good clean, because as you can see, that grease is terrible. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be that, that packed, to be honest. So either water's gone in it and ruined it, or something else has happened. I think it's going to be a nightmare because it's fucking collapsed inside. So as you can see, that is all the bearing completely collapsed. Stitch up of a job. Um, stitch up of a job. Nice one, Liam, for getting it off. Because my back is absolutely finished, Liam's just getting it off for me. So when we've got on the bench, we'll bring you back and show you it all inside. Okay, so second thoughts, we've brought you back. This rear wheat bearing and the oil seal should be still connected to the hub. It's not, it's stuck on. So we've got to get that it off. is an absolute. Look, he doesn't kill me. As you can see, that is absolutely destroyed. And I literally drove round the corner from my house. So this down. Okay, so as you've seen before, um, the stub's completely knackered. Um, and on further inspection, the hub's fucked. So as you've seen, the whole hub's finished. We've had to go and buy a new one. So we've just got to remove the disc. You need a 14mm socket with all the little teeth on it. Because it's got like one of them weird nuts. So it's a 14mm. As I say, I've had to use a big massive cracker bar ratchet to get it off just put in a vice. So what I'll do is, I'll bring you back in a second when we are putting the new hub. So what I'm doing now is we've got the hub out. Uh, nobody will believe me, but I got it out with one hit. Just giving it all clean up now, making sure there's no crap on it before I put the new hub back in. So yeah, let's get cracking. Let's get it all built up, as I say. Let's give it a nice wire brush and a little bit of sand off with some memory paper. So. So as you can see now, they're the two hubs. That's the old knackered one, and there's the brand new one, ready to be all bolted in. Same as I've done before. I'll do them opposite threads, like I'm doing a wheel. What I'm we'll doing now is, sorry about the noise, I'm just gonna put these bolts in. Okay, I'm just gonna start them off, finger tight. Okay, so here's the bed in here. Uh, all we're gonna do, Phil's just show me how to do it now, is just get a bit of grease on your finger and then just massage it in, okay? So coming in the back, bit of grease, massage it in. As I say, use some gloves, make life easier, and just keep going around and massaging it in, just like that, all the way around. Don't just put it over the, the rollers, because it won't get in properly. Just all the way around, keep going until it starts to show out of the opposite end, and do that all the way around nice bit of grease on push it in nice bit of grease on push it in all the way around just like that okay so bring us back in a sec okay so brought you back now the bearings all greased um, as you've just seen me greasing it up 
um, I put some grease around the edge. What I did do was I got Phil to use the press for me and just press it in. So when Nola gets it, goes in all nice and even. So it's all pressed and in nice and even. So as I say, you've just greased it up, you've just seen me do that. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the oil seal in. So that's just gonna go in like that. And then all I'm gonna do is just tap it round with a little flat round chisel evenly just as I'm going round. So just a little tap, then a little tap, little tap. All the way around. So as you can see now, it looks like my wheel bear and decided to eat me lanny. Um, Liam stripped most of it, I've just jacked it up so the diff oil now will run back in. We have got a new one of these, so what I'm going to do buzz these off and get it off. So let's speed it up and you can see me taking it off. So as you've just seen now on the time lapse, got the bearing in. This grease is like pink, I don't know why, but it's for like damp, moist conditions and it is for high temperatures as well. Um, mm. So it should be good grease, especially with this being a Land Rover. Now I'm putting the washer on and I've just got the um, the nut and all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the nut down so it seats the bearing and then I'll back it off a little bit, give the hub a spin, tighten it up again and then we'll then go put the lock and washer on and uh, lock and nut. So put you back on a bit of a time lapse so you can watch what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got to use this old lock and washer. I, I thought you got it with the kit. I'm new to Land Rovers, but what I'll do is I'll replace this in a couple of weeks anyway. But I'll just use the old one for now, so I'm going to use the old lock and washer. I've straightened it out the best I can. Now that just goes over as best as I can get it, which is not very good. So, there you go, it's over. And then all I'm going to do now is put the lock and nut over it. And then what we do, we tighten that up, apparently to 100 newton meters. So I'll tighten this up to 100 newton meters, and then I'll put the lock and I'll push bash the lock and wash it over it so it's all nice and tight okay so bring us back in a little while okay folks so as you can see it is all built up caliper back on sorry you never got a chance to film me rebuilding this bit and putting the caliper on i've just been mad busy it took us three trips to lr but just doing it in the reverse order so that goes on put your nuts on what i had to do was i had to um what I've done was I put the wheel on and I jiggle the wheel as I was uh, I got a bit of a bolt in to pull the shaft forward to get the sail clip on. Um, I didn't have the correct fitting, so I think I'm gonna try and get the correct bolt that fits in the shaft so you can pull it. I needed the wheel on. As we jiggle the wheel back and forward, I pull the the C V and it just popped out enough just so we could get the sail clip on and then I've just tightened this all back up and put the rubber seal back in so it's all nice and tight. They're all talked up, that's back on. As you can see, the brake pads are in and I replaced the new, the split pins with some nice new ones. Um, yeah, so looking good, looking good. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna just pop this wheel back on, um, get it sitting on all fours and see what it looks like. Hopefully the wheel is sitting a lot straighter than it was. So as you can see, 
the wheels all on, all torqued up. Um, again, when you're tightening the wheels up, we have gone over it on a previous video, but always do a cross. So if you do the top one, do the bottom one, work your way across. If it's five studs like a Star of David, um, and that's how you tighten them up, just go across each time and it will bolt it up flat to the hub. Again, just a little tip as well, if you're ever, if you're going on any long trips or you're going green laning, buy yourself a torque wrench. I think we paid out £18 out a little for ours. We buy them at like three or four at a time. But it's good to just torque your wheels up, just check the tightness of them before you go on any trips. Especially if you're into green lane or you're heavier off-roading, you can cause them to come loose. A bit of dust in them, a bit of crap in them can wear them out. So, always check them before you go on any big trips or any off-roading so as you can see it's all on let's give it a little test drive and see how we get on Okay, folks, so that was the wheel wearing video done and dusted. This is not a how to video, it's just what I done. Um, I will leave a link for the Northern Explorers how to video on doing a wheel wearing. He goes into depth and it's a really good video. So if you want to give him a watch or give him a follow, it's a really good channel. He's got about a thousand subscribers. So if you've got a D1, that's the man you want to look at. He knows his stuff. So give him a, a, a little watch if you want to do the wheel bearings, but this is just an update on the Land Rover so far. After doing the wheel bearing, I've now found that the, when you put your foot on the brake, it pulls you to the near side. Uh, so I think the offside caliper is not working correctly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bang two calipers on the front, and I'm also gonna replace the hub, the stub, and the wheel bearing on the near side as well. So I've got uh, fresh wheel bearings and everything on the front. Um, and then I'll crack on with doing the sills as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video of the list of jobs that I want to get done to the disco, like replacing the front lights, um, the welding, paint job and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through with a fine tooth comb and I'll get it all done and I'll bring a video out on how to do that. So again, I hope this video has been interesting or you've enjoyed it or it's helpful, being helpful to you if you're tackling this job. As I say, no, it wasn't a how-to. It was a little bit all over the place just because I had to go to the LR Centre in Liverpool about a million times. Must have had the reds done in. But again, big shout out to the LR Centre. They really did help me out. I'll leave a link for their website. Um, when you speak to them on the phone, they'll, if you ask them any questions, they'll help you. Stuff like that. They were really helpful uh, and they looked after me uh, with some advice and stuff like that. And at a reasonable price. They're not overly expensive um, and really good knowledge is key and they do ship i think they ship all around the country as well so give the lr centre a check out in liverpool again thanks for watching i've been panda i'll see you outdoors sometime and stay prepared bye now